Let's do it. All right. All right. Well, we are recording. Try. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Trav Bourne and Travis Mortar, brought to you by our favorite volleyball, Wilson. Today, we got our good buddy and uh, fellow competitor in the recent KOB that we ran, good old Avery Drost. What's up, boys? What up, buddy? How you doing? What up, boys? Great to I see you guys. Repping the LA uh, how, shirt. How about, how about them Lakers? Yep. Dude, took care of business. Big weekend for you, Aves. We were talking about it. On the same day that, yeah. that you won a tournament this year with uh, the young Jedi, Miles Partain, <laughs> about a couple hours later, Lake Show just dominating Miami. <laughs> yep. Dude, it was a great weekend, man. It was like we were just talking about. We played well. We won the tournament. Um, my mom was there in Tennessee. That's where she lives now. And she got to watch me play for the first time in forever and the first time in Tennessee. It was her birthday weekend. So we got to play, win in front of mom, you know, go have dinner, celebrate with mom, watch the Lakers win their 17th. It's just like, I was just sitting there in the evening, like, this is a perfect day. It's like as good as it gets. It's just so good. Dude, the Drost family has had a big couple weeks. I mean, your sister got married, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. I was, I was in Tennessee two weeks ago. My sister got married. I, fr- I went to John's sand facility. I saw it for the first time. And then my sister got married to an awesome guy. Shout out Tyler Retke and Madeline Retke. And then uh, back two weeks later, got to see my mom again, play. Dude, only good things Super. happen with you in Nashville, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> only good things. Two yeah, weeks in a row. Both of you guys have been to Hayden, uh, what is it, Hayden Beach, right? Hayden yeah. Beach. How is that? I've been uh, wondering what it's like over there. Dude, it's, it's nice. The, um, it's good. So it, and, like, the facility got tested. So there's, like, there's six courts, and, uh, and the sand is great. It's, like, a good depth. It's, it's, I would say, probably close to, like, Huntington depth, where it's, like, okay. jumpy, but it's not ridiculous. Right. Um, the dudes that we were playing in a hurricane, and it drained. Like, there were no yeah. puddles. And wasn't packed, and it it was perfect both days. So I mean, yeah. the place is is awesome. He's like adding a bunch of stuff to it, so it's not it's like far from finished. But you're like, I, I give him a lot of credit because it was bad weather, and <laughs> it was fine. Yeah, Saturday was was I was raining like as hard as it's rained while I was playing in a minute, and then uh, it definitely showcased like the one thing that he's still trying to do down there, which is build like permanent shelter. But, (laughs) but we're going to, when he gets there, it's like Travis said, like the sand stayed really, really, really good. And then what I think so sweet is like, it's like, there's this whole community of volleyball players that have come together now in Tennessee and they needed a home. Like there's a lot of players around there and now they have a home. Right. And there's all this community that's kind of built around like the, the beach, but then also like John and Robin and their family kind of like pulled all these people together and you can feel it. Like we had some dinner on Saturday night, um, I know that you couldn't make it, Trav, but we had dinner on Saturday night with the with the Heidens at their like their nice new home out there, and it's just like they got like a really good, warm, inviting thing going on. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's epic. Yeah. I've been wanting to get out there. I'll have to postpone my trip, but I'll I'll get out there eventually for sure. For Dude, sure, that'll, that'll be that's got to be your uh, your Tokyo humidity training. Yeah, Next maybe. Yeah, huh? I guess humidity. Yeah. It uh, because it's a good spot, and, and you know, You're you know, Johnny. Important. You know Johnny will help you out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be the real reason to go out there, to be honest. To yeah. Pick as much uh, knowledge away from Johnny as I can. Yeah, I felt bad because he um, – so his calf, I guess, is still bothering him from when he yeah. tore it uh, in Chicago a couple years ago when he had yeah, to flip it when he was playing with Duncan. Um, yeah. And then so, like, the, the first day – so the tournament was Saturday, Sunday. And on Saturday, I guess he tweaked it and uh, – he he pulled out him and Kalinsky. Oh, out he was playing. Sunday. He was playing against Duncan. Yeah, but no, he yeah, was yeah, playing. Yeah. That was the one that he was playing with them in Chicago. Oh, he played with he played with Duncan. Yeah, only like one that, match, but <laughs> no, and that that was because um, who who bailed? Who got hurt? Theo. That he was with. Maybe? Was that Theo. when he was with Theo? Theo. So Theo got hurt. Duncan filled in, and then and John then got were, hurt. And then John got hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know it was so it was so sad that he got hurt in that tournament because I was hoping to have that chance to play against him and Billy at some point in that tourney. Yeah. yeah. So who who all played in it? Uh, you you go, Trav. Tell um, him. Well, we got the champ right here. Uh, Avery played with Miles Partain. 
Um, I played with my good buddy, JD Hamilton, who was like one of my best friends when I lived in Florida and was actually my like first ever open partner. And so like, I never get the chance to play just kind of like mess around fun tournaments. Um, so this year I was like, all right, well, I finally get to play with you. So let's run. Um, and then Logan Weber, uh, kind of like a big, like six, eight blocker. He played with this young kid named Caleb Queckle, who's also 18 and he can ball dude. Like yeah, he's legit. He, he, um, he's in Florida. He trains with Phil and Nick a fair amount. Um, huh. and he's like very good. Like he, he will probably be making main draws pretty soon if he plays in, if he starts playing in qualifiers. Um, defender? Uh, he, I think he's a defender. I've played him as a defender and a blocker, and I think he's more effective on defense. He's at least like, he's at least 6'3". He might be, like I'm 6'4", and he's like right there. Maybe okay. just a, Miles is 6'3", so he's like either like right, right there somewhere. So he's he, skies. <laughs> Uh, nowadays, that's like a full-on defender height, 6'3". Yeah, that's oh, like no yeah. longer even a tweener. <laughs> but, he's, but he's also 18, so he could, he could grow. Like yeah. we were talking with Miles about that. Like Miles could still grow. Yeah, yeah. Miles is filling out quick too. Yeah, I yeah. Um, but then when, the, when we get there, that's what I want to talk about too. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there yeah. soon. Uh, the other – you guys played Evan Corey um, and Max yeah. Martin in the other semifinal. Um, and then a lot of the better yeah. guys teams dropped out cause you know, it was a hurricane and, um, but dude, the women's field was pretty stacked. Uh, Kelly, uh, Kalinsky and Emily Stockman played. Um, they lost in the finals to these LSU girls, Kristen Nuss and Taryn cloth who were so freaking good. They've only good, been set together this whole summer and they've played in like big tournaments. Um, it's Tar Taryn cloth. You said, right? Yeah. How tall is she? She's like six four. Like we're she's like my height. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then uh who else played on the women's side? The women's field was pretty good. Well, Katie and Delaney, of course. Katie Delaney. Yeah. I don't know if you know Delaney Maywarder. <laughs> she's new to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was fun. There was and then of course, you know, you had Adam's tournament going on. Yep. With, uh um Taylor and Nick playing together. Yeah. <laughs> What what went down over there? I, I have no. I'm so out of the loop. I'm uh, on like what six hours difference from the East Coast. Yeah. What went um, down in uh, Myrtle? Uh, Adam and Trevor won, but dude, they had to come out of the losers bracket to do it. Because wow. uh, they uh. they lost to uh, some local guys, um, Kevin Knight, who lives down in North Carolina, who's pretty good, and uh, and TJ Yurko, he's a Florida so guy. Good. Adam was not going to lose. <laughs> yeah. He's crazy. on a long win streak at that tournament. Yeah. Like that's – I can't remember how many years, but it's, it's several years now. Wow. Yeah. And there were a lot of good players who played. Like, I mean, Taylor and Nick were just kind of messing around. They didn't block the whole weekend. You know, Phil played with uh, Sutton. Uh, Piotr played with Matt Heath. So, I think people were – it was just kind of like a fun tournament. And oh, I know Piotr went out. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it was good. It was kind of a busy weekend. And there was one in Texas that was pretty big. There's one in Cincinnati that people went to. It's like, yeah. it's like all the tournaments that people could play and were just smushed into one weekend. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I read your – I love reading your uh, – your, um, whoops. Well, I thought I lost you guys for a second. Sorry. Nope. You, get, you still there? <laughs> yeah, we're good. My, my bad. No, my screen went away. I thought you got <laughs> dropped the Zoom. No, I loved reading your, your uh, write-up in, uh, in Volleyball Mag because it's cool Thanks. to, like, round up all those tournaments around the country that yeah. happen on the weekend. You'd be like, oh, okay, let's check in, like, these different regions. And yeah, my job's been super know. easy this year because usually it's, like, one tournament every two weeks. It's like, all right, I can focus on that one. I was like, damn, I actually got, like, some things to look at <laughs> this weekend. Yeah, yeah. You got to do some, some research. Yeah. But it was, it was cool watching you guys in the final. Like, like I wrote in Volleyball Mag that there were so much – so much young talent, like three of the four winners couldn't accept prize money because they're either in college now or going to college. I know. Um, yeah. But I know you mentioned you wanted to talk about Miles. How good is that freaking kid? <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. And it's funny because, you know, now, now nobody's like surprised by Miles being good. I just, the experience playing with him was so cool. So like background, I, I coached Miles – Miles's older brother, Marcus, on a club team. Marcus's 16 year, so Miles was on a 14s team. 
that their parents helped put together this club called PAC six, uh, up in Pacific Palisades area where they live. And they, his parents actually went to Westmont college, which is where I went to school. So we kind of had that connection and I met the boys and I got to, that's kind of how I got to know the Partains in the first place. But I mean, I was like running around coaching Marcus when miles was 14 and watching him develop. And he was so good back then. Like he was, he was one of the best in that age bracket, maybe the best indoors in that age bracket at that time. Um, and then we've all seen how he's kind of developed and like, yeah, his first main draw with, with his brother, Marcus, we ended yeah. up playing against him, me and Chase. And that was, that was the one I was telling you in warmups where I accidentally hit him like in the back with a ball while we were warming up and everybody, everybody booed me like, Oh, it's just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like journey of watching him get better and better and better. But like what I told him over this weekend, what I was seeing like from the last couple of weeks of training together and then like from the tournament itself is it's like um but yeah like the physical development it's like even when I'm, i met up with him in the airport you know and he's walking around in the airport it's like all of a sudden now he looks like a big strong athlete yeah he doesn't look like a kid anymore and and also you know he gets on the court and i remember you know in playing against him in the last couple of years if he was off the net a little bit or kind of off balance or it was like a tricky situation he was going to just kind of chop and roll things around now he's like five, six feet off the net and like burying balls from in transition a few feet off the net. And it makes a big difference That's to, his, to his game. Yeah, he's just, he's just like much more physical all of a sudden. And he's, he'll be 19 in December. But I mean, I feel like you guys know that too. Like there's a, I think maybe the biggest, re the biggest reason maybe that there aren't more guys that young who are really, really good and we all talk about the mental, but it's such a physical strength thing in beach volleyball. Like you, you can't just get away with that, like that bouncy athleticism. Like you have to be like physically strong to like get yourself through sand and get up and like hit balls hard. And now, so like a lot of kids that young aren't that, that like strong yet to, yeah. to do that. And so, but now miles is getting like that kind of strong. So now that he's got that going on top of like all of his, touch and his craftiness and his he's so smart he, you know he's crazy smart his absorption of the game you know he's like studying statistics at ucla you know his parents are both extraordinarily intelligent people it's like you yeah. just know he's got that going plus now he's adding the physical so it's, yeah, it's always interesting to see how people start to fill out or like when they do you know some people will fill out by the time they're 18 kind of thing where they're like yeah. the freak athlete in high school. And then after that, they fizzle, they fizzle off. Yeah. And then, but it, if you're, you know, good at every level and you just kind of have a slow growth of, you know, cause if you have that awkward phase, sometimes I feel like you get kind of demoralized, you know, where yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah. I'm just not built for this. But then you fill out like a few years later and you had already kind of given up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you can get like, inches like an inch or two not that he needs it but that's like kind of what will take you to that, that like really elite athlete level like for me i i was i've been six five since high school but i was i've probably put on 30 pounds since then like oh, yeah. every year i put on two or three pounds just natural weight too like i haven't lifted in two weeks i've kind of been taking it easy and I'm still maintaining 200 pounds. Yeah. Uh, but I've been 6'5". I was, like, in college coming in at, like, 169, 170. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't think – I honestly think I just, like, ended my filling out period at 30 years old. <laughs> in terms of, like, strength, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, like, uh, I don't know, grown man muscle, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, I was just going to ask you guys, like, how your growth went. My like height, that. my height stopped at probably seventeen, eighteen. But Travis, you were you were super late, right? Dude, I uh, I graduated high school at like five foot ten, like one hundred and thirty five pounds. That's insane. Wow. <laughs> thirty five? Yeah, dude, I was tiny. You're like wow. hundred pounds heavier now. <laughs> dude, you are, dude. I gotta share. You're like two ten right now, or <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like six four, two ten ish. <laughs> wow. But I did, I grew six inches my first, um, like, so I graduated high school at like 5'10", 
by winter break my freshman year of college, I was 6'4". And it hurt so bad. I had to take like Advil just to walk to class because my knees were killing me. Oh, and yeah. I still like kind of have knee, like chronic knee pain from, from how fast I grew. Yeah. But it took me a while to fill out like because my metabolism was so freaking fast from growing as quickly as I did that I would eat like a box of spaghetti a night and like I wouldn't gain any weight. So it took me a while to, to fill out. It took me until I was like 25 to like actually like kind of fill out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's when all the older guys are telling you like, oh, enjoy this. This is great. And you're like, no, this sucks. Like I'm hungry all the time. It hurts. Yeah. And I, I was can't. so uncoordinated. <laughs> I would yeah, like, I like to sure. dribble in basketball and like just leave the ball because I was like, God, it's got another six inches to come up back to my hand. Right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's like they say about Anthony Davis like he was like a guard and he was six foot two or three when he graduated high school or something and then mm. that's why he has all these like guard skills yeah and then he, and then he turned into a 610 you know freak athletic freak I and, think I think growing up small and like learning all the coordination skills and yep. like for a volleyball player not just being thrown into like as a middle your whole life I think it's so good for you know, someone like Miles to be able to develop every skill in the game because he's not just like kind of oh he's he's taller than everyone in fifth grade let's just put him in the middle where he doesn't develop right. skills. yeah exactly well i had to play middle out here in hawaii because i was one of the tallest you were tall guys. enough yeah. yeah i mean it's like on our club team is like me brad lawson trevor and ben neither said. of them wanted to play metal or really could play it that well so i was just put, stuck put trevor there. in there <laughs> I was really an outside, just like forced to play middle, which was actually a blessing in disguise because it yeah. helped me with blocking a lot. I had a block, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, like, yeah. I go back and I'm playing, like, you know, outside for high school all year round, and then I go to college and like playing libero for a little bit. Yeah, and you like, right. probably just play beach. I think that's <laughs> yeah. what beach is is just doing all that. <laughs> Pretty much, that's the definition. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was I was about six three when I went to college, but yeah, like you were saying, I was try. I was maybe I was one seventy, but I don't think so. I, maybe just like under that, I was so skinny. I was still seventeen when I started college, so then I grew another inch, and then today I'm walking around like one ninety five or something like that. But it just took it took, that still took a long time. I was a very slow grower too, so that's what blows me away about these college athletes, like college football players. Oh no! Like guys will put like forty pounds on. They're huge a year or something. Yeah. You know, like I've seen guys who weren't on the football team at SC try out, make the team, and then all of a sudden they're like legitimately forty pounds heavier in like two months. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. That cannot be healthy. <laughs> I don't know how that feels? Yeah. But. And like to have like your grown men strength at that age in college at like eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old. Yeah. And then be expected as you're growing and your body's changing or it's not, or you're maxed out and then you go pro to like these other next level freakish athletes. Like, dude, it's no wonder everyone's getting hurt. Yeah. I mean, granted, you're going to get hurt no matter what in that sport, but yeah, that's, that's a crazy transition. Like physically. Yeah. That's why I like beach. Like it's just so much easier on your body in every way. Like you just get to be whatever your natural weight is. Like I'm naturally a little bit bigger and heavier. So like 210 is fine. Some guys like Miles Evans is a string bean. He plays at like 180, and that works for him. Yeah. You don't have to be like this monster. Have you guys um, like paid attention to your weight and like how you play on those certain weights, um, and try to gauge it off that? Go ahead. Ace. I have. Uh, like you yeah. play better light or heavy, or like is it more like just a right in between kind of thing? Yeah, it's man, it's a tightrope, but like there's like unlike Trav I think you know we were talking I think you and me were talking about this Trav like I think Jake was sharing the other the other day a little bit more about how he's he wrote some stuff about how even still at his age like packing on calories and keeping weight on is still like a challenge for him where did he write that? might have just been like on Instagram or something like that he, he shared something about I know I've like chit chatted with him about it but also I, I saw him write it somewhere. Um, I got I to gotta steal any knowledge he puts out there. I got to steal it. <laughs> I know. No, I think it was just because he. I think he would like post a video of him uh, lifting at USAV with Christian. Oh, nice. And he was still, he was still, he was lifting heavy. And 
uh, are like heavy, like he said. It was heavy. And, and he, and oh, he, he, looks, uh, he looks heavy. Yeah. And he still, and he was explaining that he continues to feel the need to lift heavy even into his age. He was sharing some research that Tim P. Lowe did from um, USA Indoor and uh, some, some, some research that supports like older athletes continuing to, to load heavy on their weights to, to maintain, not only to maintain strength, but to maintain their joints, which sounds kind of counterintuitive. Yeah, it, to me, I feel like you're almost like sending messages to your brain. Like if you slow down and start yes. decreasing as you get older, your brain says, okay, I'm getting older. Yeah. Now, like everything's got to go down. But if you don't ever let it stop, like Hayden never stops working out ever. Right, ever. Your, your, your brain's never like, okay, now I'm getting older. It's like, no, this is just par. Like, we're going to stay here. Exactly. And I feel like that's kind of what, what those guys are having to deal with right now. For sure. And so Jake was explaining, like, increasing that, you know, keeping that heavy load was, like, continuing to keep his joints healthy, plus keep him strong. And he was explaining that he still needs that to keep his body type strong because – and he was explaining, like, understanding your body type is a big part of the game that you need to know because I think Jake was saying his dad today is, like, six foot two and, like, 130 pounds or something. Whoa. But yeah, you know, Mr. Gibb is a really thin guy. Um, and, and like I was, I was saying, my mom is super thin. Like, Trav, you just met my mom. She's really yeah. skinny. Um, always, always, always been that way. So just like keeping weight on for me is always a challenge. And what I find is like pretty quickly, I'll start to feel empty. And that's when I don't, that's when I don't feel good. Like if I'm not working hard to eat, eating more than I feel like eating pretty much always oh, and I, I I don't like that feeling of playing feeling kind of like like strung out like I like to feel full and strong and so being close closer to like my big full weight which is for me somewhere like around 195 is a lot better than if I ever dip below 190 I start to feel really really not as good like um I get like shaking both like <laughs> when I'm yeah bad, yeah like, like yeah yeah like not not just playing but like walking around you know yeah. i just don't, i don't feel good trying to like to deal with a whole day i just don't feel as good so yeah i i feel like i play better at like my like so my range is like 198 to 203 kind of like that's kind of where i fluctuate yeah i and when i'm playing at 203 i feel like it's a little too heavy and when i'm at 200 range i feel like i'm like just right it's kind of like, I don't know if it's placebo or something, but yeah. Yeah. But like, I feel like I can feel those two or three pounds and just like cardio wise. But then when I'm at 200, I can move it. I can, you know, yeah. cardio is good. And then 198, it's like, I feel like I have a little more power to access. So it's, yeah. to me, it's like, especially like late in the day, like in like yeah. match three or something, if you have to do it. Yeah. And obviously it's going to change based on going to the bathroom and, if you ate right before right yeah drank well, enough and... yeah and if you're playing you're going to be light anyway but generally speaking i think that's kind of how it works for me yeah i think like it's your weight complexion is so different too like i play better i've kind of figured out that i play better when my legs are pretty strong but my upper body like you know i used to just do like bench press and pull-ups all the time but it's just yeah, totally yeah. useless for volleyball yeah. So when I'm light up top, but like my legs are strong and I'm still kind of the same weight, like 200 to like 210 is kind of like what I'm comfortable with. Then that's, yeah. that's kind of like my sweet spot. But I also play in very different tournaments than you do. Like the FIVB is so slow. So I burned so many calories in like a CBVA. We were playing seven matches. Well, in a day. ADP, oh, oh, I see what you're saying. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, like, yeah. We're like yeah. qualifiers, you know, it's yeah, faster, yeah. right? Yeah, and the FIV would be like, yeah, they, they move the game along. But you might just play one match in a day. Right, right, totally, totally. You know, so you don't need necessarily need to be pretty, like, super light to right. play your one match. You know, you can mm -hmm. go, like, full power for that. No, that's totally true. Whereas, yeah. like, a and, qualifier, and you're, you're going you're gonna to lose some calories. <laughs> yeah, like, people talk about kind of, like, carbo-loading or, like, you need a lot of energy. But really, for us, it's you can always refuel before a match. Yeah. Oh, you can refuel in between sets if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. We're really not an time. endurance sport at all. I feel like back in the day, people used to like want to like carbo load. And I need all these calories for the day. Like, no, you can just keep throwing them in. We had yeah. so many breaks. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, uh, you uh, know, in Back to the Future, when they're just like, when they have the DeLorean and they're fueling up and like Doc is just throwing like banana peels and trash in there. That's what I feel like during a tournament. I'm just like, anything, anything. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Calories. <laughs> Dude, I, I used to do that. Like I didn't want to eat anything that didn't feel super clean during a tournament. And then I realized at some point, I don't know when, that it was like fuel. Like if you got to fire a slice of pizza or something, because that's what you can get in you. You know, sometimes it's just a little hard to eat when you're like dehydrated and you just yeah. kind of like, you just sort of like gave everything in a long match and you got to play again. So you have time to refuel, but your stomach doesn't really feel like taking in a lot of food right then. And you're like, I don't know, you wait too long to fuel. And before you know it, like you didn't get that fuel in you. That's a moment where like, if you don't feel like you can get some chicken and rice down, it would be better to just eat something not as clean than to not eat. For yeah. me, that's what I found. For sure. Yeah. And well, I mean, and you've been doing this for like a pretty long time. Like I just, in the story that I wrote, like 10 years since your first uh, AVP main draw, I think. I know. You've had some time to tinker with this. Like how long did it take you to kind of figure out like what works for you? And like, not even just like nutrition and weightlifting, but like your game style and like right or yeah. left defense block. Like you've kind of experimented. You've done everything, dude. Well, now I'm, I'm, I'm more confused like every day about defense block <laughs> stuff like i figured we'd probably talk about that at some point too yeah and, and left side right side like yeah i just keep confusing myself um because i just went back you know after playing right side and defense with doherty i just went back to playing left side and blocking full time with miles and it's like so that's such a that's that's a crazy one but then stuff like um i've definitely figured out a bunch of stuff about routines and training figured out so much yeah and I, I i just i know like you know miles is so inquisitive like he was asking me a lot of questions about that this weekend and we were it was cool to talk but there's still so much so much more i'm figuring out like i think i finally figured out kind of how i like to periodize the week leading up into tournaments in terms of lifting yeah and like when i want to do it how how much and I, I, I lift a lot like i do a lot of gym time and but like knowing when to get that last heavy workout in and how much recovery I need. Mm -hmm. Like for example, now I, I know for sure that I benefit most from doing my last heavy lift. Um, say we're going to play on Saturday. Like we just did yeah. do that. Do that on Wednesday. Okay. And then have a full Thursday and Friday to recover from that. And do you, do you practice and get touches on Thursday and Friday or are you just like totally off? Yeah, I, I prefer to get a few touches the day before the tournament. Um, we didn't do it just now. Like for example, we flew, we flew on Friday and then miles was asking me like, do you want to practice in the morning on Friday and then fly in the afternoon and then play on Saturday, Sunday? I said, mm -hmm. I said, no, I thought didn't want, didn't want to play and then jump on a plane. Right. And then go to bed late and then get up and play. But if I'm like at the site early enough, which I normally would, I would like to get touches the day before but but it doesn't have to be long i don't mind like playing a hard 45 minutes or something like full speed just not right. not like a two-hour practice like a standard That's, two hour yeah yeah for sure and then um but yeah even the stuff like eating like i've still gone back and forth about this you know there are times i thought like oh i should play as lean as possible phil phil would say he like he loved this time period where he was like crazy lean because he felt so good yeah Phil said he was playing one season when he was winning all those tournaments with Todd at like 189 pounds and he's 6'9". <laughs> Crazy. But, but that's why I think Jake was saying in his, his post too, like just knowing your body type, you, you've got to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. There's just, there's no, everyone is so different like that. Everyone's body is, is really unique and you, there's no other way to figure it out, but to know it for yourself. But you, but you do have to figure that stuff out because because strength and physicality is such a big part of our game. Like it, it makes all the difference. Yeah. Dude, I was, uh, so I'm in Florida now. And so I trained with uh, Eric Baranek this morning and we were just talking about it because we, we both wear this, uh, this whoop. And so it tracks, oh, yeah. it tracks like calories burned and the strain you put on your body and your heart rate <laughs> and all this stuff. Is that when you, you tracked your, uh, your calories burned at the KOB and it was like, 
<laughs> just a stupid number <laughs> skyrocket. Cause yeah, like, I was like, you know, when you're blocking, running up, jump serving and getting 98% of the serves, except for like an <laughs> accidental one to Trevor that he shanks, then you, you just <laughs> actually burn more calories. And I, and Eric, no, I served Trevor on purpose on that one ball. <laughs> when, when I said should have done it earlier, I, I was like, <laughs> it worked out. But it's, it's been fascinating because, like, we have this group of, like, 30 volleyball players where we can all see each other's kind of strain scores. And, like, everyone gets impacted differently by practice. And mine yeah. is, like, through the roof. And so it's, like, my game style is so much different, like, what it puts on my body than, like, what Phil, for example, would be. Because no one serves Phil. Right. He doesn't have to put in, like, an 8,000% effort a longer, on his jump because he's so big. So, like, everyone's just so different in that regard. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not, I'm not an effective player unless I'm going. I I, I like have to play with, right? I like full you speed. Put the gas pedal like, down. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta jump serve hard and, and, uh, and and you know bust it to the net and then max jump up there and even my side out game is not like it's not even like Taylor's where I'm just kind of like. <sighs> yeah, it makes it look so. Easy. It makes it look so easy. I I'm like having to work. And, and I think I had to accept that too. I, I remember Jeremy, Jeremy Casebeer said something like that too. Like there are some players who, who play with like a certain kind of smoothness and that's just who they are. Um, other players have to accept that they're like going to do like physical, they're going to be like physical workhorse kind of style. Um, mm -hmm. And that's who they are. And I think I'm closer to that than I am like a, yeah. I'm trying to think of other examples of like guys that just kind of do it really slow, effortless looking. I feel like I've Never. been more of the workhorsey kind of guy over the years, but it's actually I something I've been so, working yeah. on yeah. a lot because I mean, efficiency and, and learning, knowing when to step on the gas uh, as, when you're going deep into tournaments is huge. But I feel like, I mean, especially with like Hayden, it was like balls to the walls at all times and, and he's going to use me and uh yeah options but now now i'm definitely trying to learn how to play more efficiently and know when i have to turn it on and when i don't uh yeah. I, I think that's huge to be honest especially on defense too like there's a way to play relaxed defense you know and then and not get like dug in and and play inefficiently i mean yeah, yeah it's just about being more efficient and like for me teams I feel like teams have exploited me over the years by making me do everything. They're like, okay, try wants to do everything. Let's make him do everything. Oh, me too. Including this short serve, you know? And I'm like, what? Why are they coming at me? And, like, <laughs> and then I finally realized, I'm like, they just want me to do everything. And I'm going to come yeah. in hard and rip balls. Yep. Uh, I think that's a huge part of the game that, that I can for sure uh, work on. I thought it was something I was going to ask you guys because I feel like you both could, could relate to this a little bit, like as blockers and then especially as kind of like smaller, medium-sized blockers. Um, so we're just playing this tournament, Hide and Beach, and, and it's really good, Stan, like, you, like we're saying. It's not, like, it's not like dust or whatnot, but it's still – it's just like that, that finer kind of East Coast sand that's like yeah. – it's just jumpier, like most tournaments on the world tour are versus like our South Bay deep sand beaches. And, right. Um, and so, like, in the semis, you know, Trav, you were watching us or, or, or maybe playing at the same time. We were, we were playing uh, Max Martin and this young guy, Evan, Evan Corey, who's – I thought he's, like, his first time I played in, he reminds me a lot of, like, a, like a Troy, like a Troy he, field because he's he gets, so – Everyone says that. He's just a left-handed yeah. Troy field, and he's like, ah. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got a really similar-looking body, and he's about the same size, but he's lefty, and he also – is just like plays with like a big athleticism and so and max is big and heavy like a thick dude and he's probably six five or maybe he was more, even like six six i thought he's big and hits like a heavy just heavy ball so both these guys were just banging balls on this hard sand and like you i feel like you guys have probably gotten to this kind of match too where it's like all right i'm the blocker like i'm either gonna have to get in someone's face and block some balls or this is going to be like a coin flip because we're not going to like scoop a lot of these things and transition a bunch of these. And yeah, we're either going to just like trade blows or I'm going to have to like get a block and, and those kinds of moments too. 
where like you're gonna have you're doing some siding out and you're hitting your jump serve hard and you know like the pressure's on you to get to like have enough juice physically to really like compete at the net with these big physical guys is like that's where this physicality stuff comes into play that's, a lot that's you totally step against you can strategize with that too you know like if if you're coming in and you guys are blowing up balls and just hitting a lot and you know that the other other team's gonna have to send their blocker up to match jump for hitting the whole time and then you stay on that guy serving right you know you can really wear people out that way there's a, there's a lot of little things you can do in that sense where if the guy doesn't know how to play efficiently and conserve energy like even coming down to celebration is something i had to learn yeah. you're in a big match and it's hot and you're grinding and you're celebrating huge you're wasting so much energy yep eventually i just get into this like at least when i'm mindful of it i get into like a just like relaxed celebration just like ah yeah 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 <laughs> don't celebrate just you know i'm even like telling my partner just like no 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 relax <laughs> yeah r-e-l-a-x <laughs> <laughs> the raf it's all wasted energy <laughs> You see that chair just like floating away back there. Floating Lakers chair. <laughs> There's a kid pulling it, I swear. It's not my house isn't haunted. <laughs> um, but Aves, you uh you kind of mentioned not an identity crisis, but a little confusion, you know, because you've been training right side defense for the last couple months. I know. You know, and then you're like, oh, I'll play left side block with Miles, and then you guys just like barnstorm through the tournament. Um so what, like, what are you thinking here with what your next yeah. kind of chapter of your beach volleyball career is going to look like? Well, I'm thinking that I'm in a really good place to go play KLB in Florida in a few weeks. So that's, <laughs> okay. that's good because I, that, that's the next thing on right now. I feel like I don't need to worry, but then, yeah, it kind of goes back to that conversation we were just having about when you get into those matches where you're going to have to have a blocker get in somebody's face or else this is going to be tough. Like, um, You know, I, I think we could we could that semifinal match went three and it yeah. took me a little while to get those guys were ripping a couple of aces and hitting the ball really hard. And I like eventually I got on them and we blocked some balls. But like it was definitely I had to like it was going to be up to me to, to do that or else we could use We could lose that. Right. Um, and then try, you know, this like th that's the case on a lot of games on the world tour. Like, um so uh, I, I remember Todd telling me that a long time ago. Todd Rogers is just like the way the game is evolving and things are going. Like if the if the block isn't just like a serious threat on the world tour, it's it's just not going to be. It's just going to be so hard to win games. You have to make them change pace. Like if yeah. they're blowing balls up, you have to make them shoot or something. You know. Yeah. And, and make them beat you a different way kind of thing. But if you can't yeah. stop, like, their bread and butter for, like, these huge guys, yeah. it's like the Netherlands. Which guy are you going to serve, you know? Yeah. Good luck with Rob, that, he's you know. Blow yeah. thing. He's, like, 6'10 yeah. on one side, and then your outside is Brower. He's, like, the most physical guy on tour. Yep. Uh, but if you can't get in his face, uh, then you're – they're just going to, they're going to dictate the pace, which, which yep. they do with most teams, to be honest. Like it's. Yeah. So those boring. guys, especially. But you have to be able to take one thing away from like their bread and butter and make them yeah. do something else. And now everyone's, everyone's detonating mm -hmm. balls and you just have to be like, you know, there, there are teams out there that, that do it with blockers our size, obviously, and do it really, really well. But it definitely, um, it, I think it, it turns up, it turns up the pressure on on your your side out where you just you're gonna have to side out um really consistently right uh, and you're just gonna have really low margin of error throughout all the other facets of the game you know so like you and trev you know side out so well and then and then i think you guys also get in the way big time with the block but it's like it's tricky man if you're if guys are if you're not really shutting them down with the block your, your pressure's on you, you know, majorly you have, to, you have to be okay with um them beating you in other ways you know you have to know yeah. when to be like i'm gonna leave half the court open for you to shoot but i'm not gonna let you beat me with that hit again yeah you know yeah being exactly. okay with that and then and then timing those adjustments i think is the big one yep 
So I'm so confused still in answer to your question, Trav, because a lot of my strengths, a lot of my strengths are, you know, I can use as a blocker. Um, I still feel like the thing I do best as a player has always been to set and transition and then help my, my partner create and get it done. And so that's why I've played really well with, with like guys who dig a ton of balls. Yeah. Um, like, like Chase, Frisch, or, you know, and Miles right now. But at the same time, it, it does feel good to not feel like, um, like guys can just beat me up as a blocker. And, and then instead of being a small, a small blocker, I can be a big defender. Yeah. And, and, and with a big blocker, um, with a big blocker, you have so much more control over the game. Um, you know, in, in terms of just like, di- yeah, I don't know, dictating, you- dictating to them that they have to do some stuff that's more advanced than just come in and hit it as hard as they can. Yeah. <laughs> You've played with some big ones too. With uh, when I first moved out to California, I think you were uh, playing with Robbie Page, and then okay. you played with with Ryan. So you played with two of the seven footers on the American scene. I know. Not a bad way to break into the defensive game. Yeah, and then, dude, like playing playing as a blocker, left sider with a guy like Chase versus like playing defense, right sider with a guy like Ryan could not be two different games. Like, there's <laughs> yeah. just going to be so many different things that. I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm kind of at my best in transition. That's like where I'm most naturally, I don't know, capable is like, yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I can do stuff that is, I don't know, is best is best for me. But, but at the same time, when we get, if I, if I'm playing in big time games against big time guys and it's up to me to get in their face and block balls, it's, you know, there's a challenge there and there's a way yeah. that guys can exploit me. You know, they can also serve me every ball and just make that really, really hard for me. And, and that I've run into that lots of times. So it's really, it's really tough. It's a tough, a tough decision there. I, yeah. well, I'm thankful your, that I got to do all of it. But. Have you kind of like weighed, you know, what your beach volleyball goals would be? Cause I feel like that might also change the way you look at it. Cause like, I feel like on the AVP, you can thrive as a smaller blocker because it isn't as physical as the world tour, you know, but if yeah. your goal was, you know, to start getting into three, four and five stars that, and the world tour, you know, those guys just beat the crap out of the ball. And, you know, like we said, yeah. like, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And like you mentioned, you talked to Todd about it. So like, have you thought yeah, yeah. about what your goals would be? Cause I feel like that would probably help you dictate that next step or at least help you along the decision-making process. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Cause it very much dictates it. Right. Like, but I, I think about it in terms of – I do think about it more in terms of the AVP because I would love to have some more opportunities to go overseas and play because I love the game so much and I love traveling and being around the world. Like, my biggest goal is to – my goal is to – I have two. Like, my goal is to play volleyball, beach volleyball, long enough where I can – I can earn, a, like, a reasonable amount of money that, like, in addition to some of the other work I do, I can supplement – and like earn enough money to, to maintain a good life for my family. And, um, and then that, that's like goal number one. Cause I, I want, I want to continue to play, but the thing that can't be compromised is like, is like, uh, earning a reasonable amount for my family and just keeping us moving in that way. Right. Um, and so like, I'm, I'm totally cool with grinding at whatever else I have to grind out on the side to, to sustain it because my family, like we enjoy this process of beach volleyball so much we're all in it together it's so cool like and you know and the other facets of my life like being a coach and being like a youth leader and things like that everyone enjoys like being a part of this journey of me playing too so as long as it's like a cool thing for everybody in that way I want to keep doing it um but also for myself I mean seriously I still I still have a goal and I believe I that I want I I want to win an AVP tournament and be an AVP champion um there was a time for a little while I wasn't sure, like, could I do that, you know? And I still don't know if I'm, if I have all the gifts to go on to be like a multiple, multiple time champion and win 10, 20 tournaments. I don't know if I, I'm not sure, like if I, if that's really like reasonable for me with the, the, whatever like gifts I have, but I do believe that I have it. I have enough and that I can continue to grow enough to like, you know, maybe when, when there's an opportunity 
and things are rolling and maybe you know I get that shot that I can I can I can get that done and win one and um, that would mean a lot to me just because I put so many years into this learning and I love this so much that I think I would enjoy that so much forever to have that so I, I believe it's possible I believe I can do it and then but then the question is like can I do that can I win an AVP tournament as a full-time blocker um I think I can, but I, but I also, there are the odds better as a full-time defender or at least as like a split blocker. That's kind of the, that's the question right there. Yeah. So that's, that's the goal. Like that's the, that's the question. How do I, how do I win an AVP tournament? What's the path? Yeah. Cause you've been close as both, you know, you were a defender with Bill in yeah. New York, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then you were a blocker yeah. with Jace in Hermosa. So you've yeah. been close with as both. Yeah. And you know, and, you and Trambley, right? In uh, was that you and Trambley? In me and Trambley. That was a Cuervo, though, right? That was a Cuervo in 2012. That was a great tournament, yeah. Yeah, that was tournament was insane. But yeah, yeah, we were like a millimeter away from winning that tournament because we won the first, and then we were up 2019, and Casey Patterson hit an option that just was like just touched the line oh. on its way out, like definitely touched it, but it was like yeah. that close, and like definitely haven't forgot that but yeah a lot of a lot of the times you know really to win an AVP tournament you guys know it comes down to typically over all these years getting past Jake or Phil or you try or Trev or Taylor um you know and or like Casey Chase I think that's that's what it comes down to so like where's the path for me to do that um I don't know. I'm still, I'm still figuring it out, man, honestly. Yeah. And you have some time too. I mean, have you thought about kind of what your ideal partner would be? I mean, obviously, you know, the Olympic guys are out of the equation, but yeah, you know, everyone else is kind of looking to, all right, well, 2024, but we still have this kind of like two or three year period before the next quad points begin. So yeah. I feel like we're going to see a lot of mixing up the next two years. Have you, yeah. kind of, do you have like the partner spreadsheet going on? <laughs> Mentally, I do, <laughs> yeah. because because uh, you know if this I don't know if this is news to anyone, but like Ryan Doherty is for sure retiring from yeah. beach volleyball, so he's he's not going to compete anymore. And I knew that going into the um, the the bubble series in Long Beach, the Champions Cup. So yeah, I'm a free agent, and yeah, I got in my head, you know, it's like a uh, few names, co- couple of, yeah, couple of names, and and I'm looking forward. You know, I'm going to train my my butt off to go down to Florida and have a good tournament KOB and, you know, try to show, show somebody that I, that I got this. And totally. I think I'm getting better, honestly. And then that I'm, and that I'm stronger physically. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I know I, a lot. I, dude, this, uh, this time has been good for you. Like when I first saw, I was like, damn, Avery's like training hard through these times. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And I was, I was like, I, I don't know if that would be my approach. Um, yeah. But then I see, you know, training with us, holding your own, winning practices when we're playing for money, <laughs> killing it in the KOB on, uh, you know, the one we did with McKibben's YouTube. Thanks, and then man. you're going out to this other one. And, I mean, I think you're stuck. You're, like, staying in front of people's faces and, and showing them that, that you're still balling at a really high level. It's not higher than ever. Thanks, um, I think that was a really good call by you to – to keep grinding and, and staying out uh, in the spotlight and uh, playing at a really high level through this this time, I think it can totally help in your favor. If I, if I'm one of those guys that's available, you're you're on my radar for sure. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you're a good, dude. Thank you for if saying they're that. Smart I, and they listen to the Sandcast. <laughs> <laughs> I I uh, I really appreciate that a lot, man. Like life, I had you know a long time ago, kind of had set up this year for like September and October to still be volleyball time because that's how a normal year right. kind of goes. So like when things were kind of done with the Long Beach series, I was like, well, I still have kind of scheduled my life to have plenty of time to train in these next few months. So like I'm going at it. And, and then I was really stoked when that KOB announcement came for um, the thing in Florida because that timing was really sweet. It's like, okay, if I can get, I want to push it really hard until that 
try to play really well in that tournament. And then, okay, then we're into November and that's a pretty good time to maybe like right. my coaching stuff is going to kick into gear. I focus on that. And, and so it's just like, let's get it. Let's, let's get it in September and October. Let's, let's get it. So it's been good for us too. Like Trev and I training against both of you guys, just yeah. having yeah, people for sure. out there that want to like show up and, and like go all out and maybe bet a little bit of money to make it <laughs> yeah. competitive. It, it's amazing how little fun. Bit we bet each other to, to make us go all out. But like, yeah. to me, that's the biggest difference. Like in a year from now, if you bet $5 on every practice versus nothing, you're going to yeah. have so much more quality at the end of the day. And you, you will have paid, sure. if you lost every time you'll have paid like a hundred bucks or something. You know? It's true. It's true. It makes a lot of difference. Hey, hey I got 19 with five bucks on the lines, just a little tighter. <laughs> Cause <laughs> then if you lose because of the money, cause you just don't want to give it to Trevor. You just don't want to give it to Trevor. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah. It's, it's like, it. then you don't, then you have to type that Venmo to Trevor. And it's just like, <laughs> I love if you look at the Venmo feed, it's so funny to see how many times Trevor's name comes up like in the Venmo feed because he's always betting everybody everything. <laughs> he's just Hopefully always it's coming in. Hopefully it's yeah. coming or no, it's going out. But like whether it's going in or going out, you see Trevor's name a lot. Dude, I got like I got like five minutes. Yep. Oh, I wanted to say two things. Can I say yeah. two things? Yeah. Sure. First of all, I got to shout out whoever it is that makes your sandcast temp tattoos. Because I wore one of those in the KOB and I couldn't get that thing off for like seriously nine days. <laughs> and, and the first, the well, first night, your life. <laughs> bro, the first night I, I was probably just too tired and I didn't even try to wash it off. I was pretty tired after that, but I, I went to bed with it, you know, it was on my shoulder here and I was probably sleeping on my side. And then like the next day I noticed on my bed sheet was just like a perfect print of Sandcast <laughs> podcast <laughs> that like ruined those sheets. Cause now I can't get it off. No, they're way I better I now. I don't know if it's ruined or it's just <laughs> they're marked forever. Upgraded. Yeah, so that's one thing. Like, shout out to whoever made those. The gnarliest, <laughs> stickiest temp tats in the history of temp tats. <laughs> Thank you, and then I want, I want to shout out this really quick. These guys, um, this logo that has been on me a lot as I've been playing is Wedbush Securities. When you're talking about, like, how I can keep pushing it and whatnot, like, I owe these guys a lot. Yeah, Blake. Blake's like, Blake's like excited about it too because when I was really nervous too about like, like how I was gonna make like make any kind of money playing volleyball during the COVID times and the shortened season and all that like um, Woodbush Securities is a is a financial securities corporation in in LA um, run by two by two brothers who are the co-presidents and they're they're local guys and they're they have they have kids between them who are in the volleyball community and I've been blessed to know them for a while and they were like we want to support volleyball you know they, they supported the avp in the series and we want to support you because we appreciate watching you you know do your thing in our community and then on the on the sand so they they were like however many tournaments there are and then even going into next year like we got you and we want to support you and and hopefully you can help us you know draw a little attention to our brand doing financial management financial planning like can't imagine like a couple better a better people in that super cutthroat world like incredibly good people good family managing billions of dollars but yet like wonderful friends to a lot of people in this community so they're like they're the best wedbush securities and they've made a lot of stuff possible for me this year so i had to shout them out yeah man we appreciate any sponsors who make beach volleyball's players lives better yeah. we're big fans <laughs> so yeah for sure I, yeah i wanted to get that out there if the boys yeah. are watching mr mr g and mr e i'll blake yeah awesome well uh well blake we're coming up to the end of the podcast so maybe maybe blake can uh sign us off here if she wants to say something for the boys blake you want to say something to the people you gotta say it right here I'll say anything hi blake hi <laughs> how old are you i'm four now four wow. our wow. youngest guest <laughs> we broke records oh micah was here micah was he's two so he broke records okay <laughs> yeah well aves i know you shout uh, out to the dads man all the dads out there <laughs> no kidding um i know you've had all the all the future dads and you got coaching coming up um yep. so we won't we won't keep you here any longer but uh blake if you want to sign us off and say shoots blake shoots, can you blake. say shoots 
Shoot. <laughs> Stay loud. Perfect. Say, Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Blake, Blake really wants uh, the, the Bourne family to, uh, to find a new home somewhere in our neighborhood. And so we're going to oh, get Uncle Andy McGuire on the case. There we go. Perfect. When the, Bourne, when the Bournes come back from the island and they need a new home, our neighborhood's, our neighborhood's available. Oh, we're in. Uh, we want to play. Yeah. All right, guys. Awesome. Thanks, boys. Thanks. That was fun. Later. Fun talking to you guys, man. Yeah, ma'am. Much, much love, much aloha. Hello.